Hey, welcome back everybody. So today I want to talk to you guys about upgrading your small block Chevrolet. So um, I get a lot of interest in the early type small block. Now the early Chevrolet small block has been around, the basic design has been around since 1955 and of course it has evolved. Um, a lot of the engines that are out there today are from the TBI era. They made them for a lot of years and they have a a center bolt valve cover head that's called a TBI head, it has a swirl port, and those were made from about 1986-ish um, up to 95, somewhere in there. Um, it, the thing about the, the TBI swirl port heads is they're garbage. <laughs> they don't flow, they don't make power. They, they're very similar to the early style head, they have this big um, bathtub type garbage inefficient chamber and the intake runners are really small they're like 155 160 cc's they don't really flow a lot of air and so a lot of the engines that are being sold out there today in fact I see a lot of engines advertised or a lot of cylinder heads advertised as as Vortec heads when in reality they're not Vortec heads the TBI heads look a lot like Vortex but the TBI heads are going to have six bolts over here, just like the early style. The Vortec heads, and I've done videos on this before, are going to have bolts that go straight down in, and there's two bolts here and two bolts here. There's nothing in the middle here because, and the reason that GM did that is because if you look at the Vortec intake, the, the fuel injection intake that came on the Vortex, which they used in trucks and SUVs from 1996 all the way up to like 2003, even after the LS was being produced, there were some trucks and vans that still had this Vortec in it. But the fuel injection intake does not allow room for bolts here. There's just, it just, you just can't do it with that Vortec intake. Well, we're gonna solve that problem. So a, a really good upgrade, if, you're, if you wanna do this on the cheap. Now you can search around and you can find these heads in the wrecking yard, they made a lot of them but you gotta make sure you get 96 and up, and you gotta make sure that the intake only has four bolts, two here and two here, and that is the, and there was only a couple of castings. There is, this one's an 062, and I believe there was one other casting. This is the head you're looking for. Um, I don't know if you guys watch Engine Masters or not, but there is actually an episode of Engine Masters. In fact, I was just watching it. What is the name of this? Anyway, on this episode, they took a crate motor that they bought for like 1,300 bucks, that had these crappy heads on it, just a big open chamber head, terrible stock camshaft. Um, the name of the video is Best Cheap Chevy 350 Mods Dyno Proven Engine Masters Episode 24. So if you're not familiar with Engine Masters or Roadkill, and you don't know who David Freiberger and Steve Dolchik and uh, you know the guys from the Hot Rod Garage and the and, uh, Roadkill are, uh, Mike Finnegan. If you don't know who those guys are, I don't know what rock you've been living under, but trust me, you need to start watching those shows. They're fantastic. Um, Engine Masters is one of my absolute favorites because they just spell a lot of myths. Like one of the episodes that they did in Engine Masters is they said, hey, you know, what happens when you you have to bash your header tubes in to get the bolts in? So they, they took some headers and they took a hammer to them and they started bashing the header tubes and they were just making dyno runs with them. Well, they almost had the header tubes like bashed completely closed and it literally made almost no difference in how much power the motor made. So their conclusion was, hey, if you gotta bash the header pipe a little bit to get to your bolt in, go ahead and do it. It's not gonna affect the performance. So they do really cool like grassroots type stuff like that that guys like me and you can actually apply to our everyday lives and use. I can use them in engine building here in the shop. But they did a head shootout. They bought a crate motor with the crappy heads on it and they modified the engine. They modified the motor. They took a set of Vortec heads. Now, a, a couple of the drawbacks to the Vortec, um, and we're gonna modify these. I'm gonna show you how we actually do these mods. Uh, David Freiberger talks about them in the video and he does a really good job as usual of explaining you know, what we gotta do. In this video, I'm actually gonna show you how we modify this head to make it compatible with a bigger camshaft and, and make serious power. So the, the 
low performance dish piston, cast disc dish piston, stock crappy camshaft crate motor combination that GM sells. You can buy this. I know that they they have a crate motor made in Mexico at the plant in Mexico, and a lot of people shy away from the castings that say made in Mexico on them. I'm telling you, man, don't be afraid to use those castings. They're actually really good high nickel content castings. We have decided to use an 010 block, and I've actually already got the short block done. I'll take you over in a little bit and show you what that looks like. But instead of putting the old crappy type TBI heads or even the early Chevy heads with the open chamber, the 76cc chamber, really inefficient burn, it's just a terrible chamber, we're going to upgrade to a Vortec head. Those crate motors that have this chamber on it and the dish piston had about 7.8 or 7.7 .7 to 1 compression from the factory with a 35 thousandths deck clearance and a 40 thousandths gasket. This literally less than 8 to 1 compression, they're horrible. And they make about 220 to 240 horsepower, depending on you know what kind of intake, whether or not you change and upgrade the cam a little bit. They make a little more power, but basically in stock form around 220-ish horsepower, which is pathetic. I believe GM selling that crate motor for 1995. There's some aftermarket companies that are building just plain Jane stock type crate engines that you can buy at 350. With 220 horsepower, you can get it for like 12, 1300 bucks. But I mean, you know, it, it's just the power is just they're just really weak. Um, but this video is kind of for those of you that already have like the low compression type 350 Chevy in your truck. Let's say you have a pickup truck or a car um, and it has a 350 in it, anywhere from the mid 70s all the way up to, to you know, 1994, 95 and you're just a little disappointed with the power output because I'm telling you they only had about 220 horsepower. Well, if you want to upgrade that and you want to, some of you guys might want to put a carburetor on it and I'll show you what the intake looks like here in a minute. But anyway, what we have going on here is the reason that the Vortec head is so much better is a couple of things. Number one, the intake runners, it has a much larger and a much more efficient intake runner. They, they really improved the uh, the airflow and the velocity through the intake. So we get a lot more air into the engine and as most of you know, air equals power. Right? You got to have air. Um, what's impressive is in this video, Engine Masters, they literally took these old heads off and they put on uh, the Vortec heads and I got the video playing here. Original stock crate motor before they changed the heads made 334 foot-pounds of torque, okay? Yeah, that's okay, 334 foot-pounds of torque and a measly 235 horsepower. So they did a head change from this to this. They obviously put a, uh, a better cam in it. They put a dual plane uh, Edelbrock intake or performer intake. We're gonna put an Edelbrock on this thing. And they put a 280 duration comp cams in it. The camshaft that we're gonna run this is a little bigger than this. Than that, it's like 294 uh, advertised duration. It's it's actually 224, 224 duration at 50, and it's right around 500-ish lift. Well, that's a far cry from the the 390 lift cam and you know 198 de degrees of actual duration that we had in here. So we're going to put a much larger camshaft so we can get the air in and out. Uh, about 500 lift is where these flow really well. So the lift of our cam matches the flow of our Vortec heads. Now, one thing about the Vortex is this, is that the problem, one of the issues you run into, is, two issues here, number one, the valve guides will only handle about 420 lift to 450 lift in here. Well, we're putting a 500 lift cam in, and so we are gonna have to machine the guide bosses down, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. And then of course it has these wimpy press-in studs. Press-in studs are for grandma. So we want to pull these out, thread these, and put a screw-in stud in here. And we're going to do that. And at that point, basically, you've upgraded. You, you've made it capable of handling the 500 lift. We stabilize this for a heavier spring that goes with our cam. And then of course, we're going to do the typical valve job. We're going to resurface the head. We're going to uh, put guides in it. We're going to do the valve job. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on camera doing the valve job. 
um, because I've got tons of videos doing that, but I am going to show you the upgrades. Another thing that, and I don't know how many people are doing this, this is just something that I have done. There's a special Felpro gasket that's a steel gasket that goes on here. And also in addition to that, because we're going to run a four barrel intake on this, I actually set these up on the machine and I drill the center holes here. I drill them, I, I mate the intake here and I make sure it's a good mate, I bolt it on and I lay this out and scribe it and I drill a hole through the intake manifold and through the head right here. So we add, I'm going to add two holes here and I'm going to add a couple of bolts in the center of the intake to help stabilize that intake. So I've done that a couple of times on a couple of Vortec uh, uh, conversions to carburetor. I've laid these holes out, drilled and tapped them and drilled the manifold so I, instead of a four bolt intake here and here, I actually added a couple bolts here just like the early style and it worked out really well. So that's another thing that we're going to do to upgrade this. We're going to actually, and you don't have to do that. I just, I'm going to do it because I want a little extra stability on that intake. I want it to hold. Um, traditionally, if you didn't get the right kind of gasket here with the four bolts, these were kind of notorious for blowing intake gaskets. Now, Felpro does have an all steel gasket that has all but eliminated that problem. And I'll give you the part number of that gasket. So these are the upgrades that we're going to do. Now, our test motor, now, when um, Engine Masters did this test, let me pull it up here again. When they changed the cam and put a very similar cam to what we're going to use, they changed the heads, they changed the intake and put a Holley four barrel on it, just a cheap low budget four barrel. They went from 334 foot pounds of torque with this head to 397 foot pounds of torque. <laughs> They went from 235 horsepower to 264 horsepower. Or, I'm sorry, to 364 horsepower. So 235 to 364. They gained 129 horsepower by bolting these heads, which is a factory head that you can buy in the bone yard, onto a basically stock crate motor. They changed the cam, they changed the intake. Actually, they didn't change the intake because they had a performer intake on the motor when they got that original baseline run. They just had to get a different style intake because the Vortec bolt pattern is different, but basically it was the same dual plane performer type, type intake. They gained 129 horsepower. Now listen guys, you can actually do this on the cheap. You could find a set of these Vortec heads have a basic valve job done on them for like, you know, 125 bucks at your local machine shop. Just have them recut the seats and maybe mill them. And also, um, you're going to have to have them do the machine work, pull the studs and, and, and get the machine work done here. So for probably 450 somewhere in there, if you have the heads, they will do this work for you, maybe 500, depending on what type of the country. But if you can, you can, spend 500 bucks to get a set of these heads, bolt them on, buy a flat tappet cam to replace it with, and the cam's like 150, 160 bucks that I bought. You got for six, seven hundred dollars, you're you're transforming your engine from a a wet noodle to something that, I mean, I can't even describe to you how much of a difference 130 horsepower is going to make in your motor. You're literally bolting on 130 horsepower to your motor and you can do this in a weekend. You get the heads done and you can take your heads off and change your cam and everything in one weekend. Now you do have to do a flat tap of cam break in, but man, I'm telling you, I mean, of, of all of the upgrades that I've seen for the earlier small block Chevys, Nothing that I have seen, short of buying, you know, thousand, twelve hundred, fifteen hundred dollar uh, aftermarket Dart RHSs or Edelbrock heads or something like that. I mean, it, you could do it that way. But if you're on a budget, this is absolutely the most bang for the buck for a small block Chevy. All right. So hopefully I've convinced you on that that you really got to go with Vortec heads. And I believe if you have a TBI engine, I believe there is an in, uh, a, an intake from Edelbrock where you can, you can, it will use a bolt pattern here and it also will work up top with your TBI unit. So you can actually convert your TBI over to Vortec heads. Now, 
this is the intake that we're going to use for converting our little small block project that we've done here that we did on a budget. And if you'll notice, if you look at the intake bolt pattern here, there's nothing in the middle. It has these bolts that just go straight down in here as opposed to the angled bolts of the earlier one. And of course, it just has them in the corner. We're gonna add these two bolts here, like I said earlier, uh, lay it out and drill it. Okay, so let's get started. And then you can kind of get an idea of what the machine shop is going to do. To be honest with you, if you supply these heads, you have a good set of heads that are not cracked, um, I wouldn't pay more than $500 to any machine shop to have these upgrades done. Now that doesn't include these center bolts. A lot of shops probably aren't even going to want to do that, right? I'm going to do it just because I can. But as far as pulling the studs, threading and tapping these, cutting the guides down, doing a basic valve job, and maybe possibly a mill if they need it, I wouldn't pay more than 500 bucks for that. You could probably pick up these core heads for 125 bucks, something like that. Um, just be wary of the fact that they, they are a thin casting and they are a little bit prone to cracking if they've gotten hot. But if you look around, you can find some good castings. All right, so let's get going on this. Okay, so a couple of tips I want to give you here. Now, if, if you're on an extreme budget, I just kind of want to show you this so you see it. You can actually pull these rocker studs out yourself. This is just a small block Chevrolet fulcrum. You can use anything for a spacer. Uh, this is a, an inner retainer for a, a Ford 302 retainer. So you can stack that on there. You can put these on. If you have some of these laying around, um, you just kind of stack these. That's a fulcrum for a big block Chevy rocker arm. You just kind of stack those on there. Um, you start with two or three of them, but you have to leave enough threads up top that you can bite into the threads. And so I'm gonna use that combination. And these are old rocker nuts. This is a rocker nut that came off of an engine that, uh, and of course we replaced these. So what we're gonna do is if you put spacers on here and then you just run the nut down and you take a socket and you run that nut down, to lube that thread. Now we have stud pullers for this. The shop has a stud puller that goes on here, but this works just as good. So I'm gonna, you just start running that, that nut down on there. And what happens is it will start to pull that. These, these studs are press in, and generally, especially on these later model Vortex, these studs are gonna come out pretty easy. And it's a little bit of a tedious process, but if you're on a budget and you want to save some money, you're going to save money. Now the machine shop is going to have to set this up and thread these at the right angle and everything, but if you get the studs pulled out ahead of time, they're probably going to do it for less money. What's happened here, as I run the nut down, the stud is pulling up through the center of those you're probably going to have to pull the nut and add a spacer once you get to this point because you're going to bottom out on the threads. And be careful because that nut gets really hot. Now you can see how much taller this stud is than that other one. That's because as I run that down, it's going to pull the stud. So I'm going to add another spacer on there and then I'm just going to put a nut back on and usually by the time you put that second spacer in there you're pretty much at the point where the studs gonna come out Okay, so there's your stud. You can see our spacers are falling off here. And it's a press-in stud, so literally we use that old rocker nut and a few old spacers to get that stud 
out of the head and that's what you're left with. So you can do this yourself. It's a little bit of work but it's going to save you a lot of money. And you want to find some old used rocker nuts um, that you're not going to use anymore. Or you can actually buy uh, 3 8 24 nuts at the hardware store and do this. So it actually works out pretty well. Once you get that done, then of course we're going to trim this down for our, our screw in stud. So now this is our screw in stud that's going to go in there. Now this does require some machine work in order to get the height of the stud here because you can see it has a jam nut on it. We have to cut this down and tap the hole for the threads and that's something that the machine shop is going to have to do. I'll show you how to do it real quick just so you see the process but uh, once the studs are pulled you can have them do this. Okay guys so as you can see we've leveled our head and we have our cutter set up in the machine and now we're just going to go ahead and cut that boss down. We made a determination that we need to cut in order to make up <clears throat> for what's here we need to cut about four hundred thousandths off of this. So we'll set the height of the machine and do that. Okay, so there you have it. That has been machined down and that's going to make up the difference and of course we're going to put a tap in here and we'll tap the hole. Okay, and so basically that's what the machine shop's going to do for you. And now we've set this up so that our screw and stud with the jam nut's going to go on there. And once we run that down, the height is very similar to what this would be when we're done. But we don't have that wimpy press in stud in there. I would caution you not to try to tap these by hand. I mean, I know I did it with the hand tap. But what I, got, I, what I did is when we started the tap, we used the machine with the head leveled to get the tap started so that these are at the exact right angle. Once we got the thread started with the machine, then we tapped it by hand. So I'm going to go ahead and pull all the studs and do all of these on both heads. I'm not going to insult your tel intelligence by making you watch, watch me do each one of those. But the other thing now is these guides, guys. Remember I said above about 430 to 450 lift the retainer on the valve spring is going to smash into the top of this guide they don't have enough clearance here well we have a way to take care of that too once we get this table leveled in line with this we'll go ahead and lock our table down and now we take our special PC cutter and we can cut those guides down. 
Now, we got about 500 lift here. And these take about 420 to 450. It varies a little bit. So we want to take off. I usually take off 80 to 100 thousandths. I'm just going to say 100 thousandths on this. So I'm going to set the machine up so that once I start cutting the top of that guide down, and I've already got the height set, I won't, I won't give you the details on that. It's just it's boring and it's complex. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these guides down about 100 thousandths and that'll give these heads the, cap the capability of having about a 550 lift cam instead of 450. And this cutter is what's going to do that for us. trimming the outside diameter of the guide. Once my cutter hits the top of that guide, okay, so my cutter just started trimming the top of the guide down. So right there I'm going to set my depth and I'm going to put a hundred thousandths of clearance in there. So I have a depth gauge up here. We don't want to take too much off. We just want to cut a hundred thousandths off the height and we will be in business. can see we've trimmed this guide down to the point where it is about a hundred thousandths below what this was so that's going to give us about a 550 lift capability which is more than good enough for our camshaft so again I'm going to go through and do all of these the studs and the guides and uh, after that we'll come back We are definitely going to have plenty of room to drill and tap those center bolts on those heads here. Um, you know, they assume you're not going to do that, so they just put these, but boy, there's all kinds of room, so might as well add a little bit of stability to the manifold. Okay, guys, so <clears throat> you can see we I've got the heads finished. I, I cut all the guide buses down. I pulled the studs trimmed the, the stud bosses down and, and tapped everything. And now I've got our manifold that we can, we're, we're going to use. I've got it bolted onto the head. Um, and I've got uh, this science project going on here. But what I did off camera is, you know, like we talked about earlier, is you have these bolts on the ends that go in. And really there's nothing in the middle. But I, I took a a gasket from the earlier style version manifold and I, I laid it on the surface down here and I, I laid this out and I drilled these holes. So I've got these holes drilled. You can see they're drilled on both sides. And then I took and I, I bolted the manifold onto the head here. And now that I've got the manifold bolted onto the head, I just took and I laid out and center punched the holes in here and again um, we have a little bit of leeway here because I'm gonna put 5 16 bolts in it and we drilled a half inch hole here there's nothing wrong with doing that we're just gonna put a washer on there and that gives us a little leeway so that the manifold is centered on here some of the fact aftermarket manifolds will even take a end mill and slot this hole so you have the ability to um, you know you have a little leeway on the manifold and once it's centered, you can just get your, your, your bolt, bolt holes to line up. So I've got these drilled. I've got these laid out on this head. I'm going to pull the manifold, drill and tap these holes, and then we'll do the other side. And when I'm done, we'll come back. And so instead of having 
just the four bolts on each side. We're going to add a couple in the middle and we'll have six bolts which gives our manifold uh, more stability. Just gives it a better seal, a little extra insurance. But we've got our holes drilled there uh, for the correct tap and the next step is to tap those out. One of the reasons that I recommend having a machine shop do this guys is basically we have, the, we have the machine here and we have this, the angle of this surface leveled perfectly uh, with our tool and that's important. You really wouldn't want to do this with like a hand drill and a tap or something. I mean you could but I don't recommend it. This is something that I would definitely have uh, a machine shop set up to do. And then, now that we've got our hole, so you see what I'm doing is I'm starting the tap with the machine so that the angle of the threads is exactly where it's supposed to be as far as this surface goes. And then, of course, once we get the thread started, then we can just run this in by hand and it's pretty straightforward to tap your tap your holes here. Okay, so there you have it. You can see we've got our, our center bolts. Now the last time I did this I used a 3 8 bolt. I didn't do that this time. I, I used a 5 16 the same as the end holes here because the man the torque on these manifolds it's only like 15 foot-pounds. It's just really it's 12 to 15 foot-pounds. It's just really light the way they got these manifolds designed. So just a couple of extra 5 16 bolts here that match these size and we're going to torque all the bolts the same to the spec with our steel gasket. The last thing I have to do is once I get the gaskets is we actually have to bolt the gaskets on here and I have to uh, lay out the gasket and drill holes in the gasket because the gasket itself, the steel gasket from Felpro doesn't have these holes either but that's pretty straightforward. It's pretty simple to do that. Um, so we'll get the other head done and we're pretty much done upgrading these. I will show you how this manifold fits. I want to I want to stick these on the motor and kind of show you um, how the manifold and so forth goes on when you're switching to Vortec heads. Okay so this is our our victim here and this is just a typical 350 Chevy street rod motor that we're doing for a customer. He's putting it in like a 1946 Pontiac or whatever. I um, can't remember the exact year, but it's an old classic car. And he had an old wore out small block 400 in the thing. We took the 400 apart and it was a overboard worn out piece of junk. So the customer wanted right around 350-ish horsepower, which is going to be very doable. So these are the gaskets that I was talking to you about. And I actually have another video that I walk through how to upgrade with these gaskets. Don't use the factory Vortec plastic gaskets or the fiber gaskets. This is actually a steel gasket. And you can see I had to slot the gasket a little bit here um, to, you know, to line up with our bolt holes. And now I also had to off camera, I had to set the manifold up on the end mill and do some slotting with the end mill on the holes to make them match up. And that's pretty typical because I mean, even your best efforts at drilling those holes, you got to have a little leeway because 
if the block's been decked, and this one has, we got about eight off the block, and if the heads have been milled, and they have, we got about five or six off the heads, that kind of changes the geometry here a little bit. Not enough to cause the bolts not to line up. However, in some cases, when you mill the heads and block, you will have a manifold that doesn't fit, and you actually have to set the manifold up and, and, and mill it. There's a formula for figuring out how much you take off. So now the moment of truth comes. We're going to test fit this intake. So this intake goes just like so. And again, this isn't the, the final test. But when this is done, all of these bolts, all of your bolts should go in hand, uh, by hand, pretty simply. We, don't, we shouldn't have any binding or anything. So we'll put our center bolts in here. And we should be able to get all these bolts started in by hand. And we are looking pretty good. Everything's going in really easy. So yeah, all my bolts are going in by hand very easily. And that's basically it. So we've added these center bolts. Everything's going in nice. We'll pull the manifold, put our silicone under the ends, and put it on, uh, you know, permanently here in a minute. But basically, that's what you have. This is an upgrade with, from. This is actually an early small block O and O block from the early 70s. Okay, guys. So there you have it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope this helped you. Um, this this engine. Um, I'm charging the customer right around $2,800 for this motor um, with the Vortec heads, the upgrades, um, and realistically, uh, like in the video that they had where they did this and the Engine Masters video, they actually had dished pistons in that motor because it was a bone stock 350. This engine has a flat top piston in it and my compression ratio is going to be about 9.7 9.8 to 1 theirs was like 8.9 right around 9 so not only um are we getting a boost from the heads but this one actually has more compression it's probably going to make a little more than that he's asking for 350 horsepower this customer and i don't think he's going to be disappointed i told him 350 no problem Realistically, on the dyno, once this thing is dialed in with the cam and head package that we put on here, I'm going to guesstimate about 375 horsepower out of this motor, um, which is for 2,800 bucks, not bad considering GM sells a 220 horsepower crate motor from the factory for about 1,900, <laughs> uh, and you can get one from an aftermarket supplier 13 to 1,500, and it's only 220 horsepower. So really good upgrade not only that this one comes with the intake it comes with a new water pump it has a double roller timing chain it has a harmonic balancer it has the oil pan it has a high volume pump with the pickup screen welded it has new uh, long slot rockers it has hardened steel push rods that factory motor or that 220 horsepower motor doesn't have any of that stuff on it and so um you can do this on a budget. You're, you're, you know, engine building is not cheap. It is a very expensive process. Uh, this guy, and, and most customers, like he says, oh, I want 350 horsepower, but I want it to idle smooth, and I want it to get good gas mileage, and I want to run regular unleaded. Well, there are some compromises. Okay, I told him, well, it's not going to idle exactly smooth. You're going to have a little bit of an idle because of the cam we have to use. And also, uh, you know, you're going to have to run premium fuel in this thing. You know that that's just the that's the nature of the beast. So there are some compromises, but uh, you know, for twenty eight hundred to three thousand dollars, you could probably do this yourself much cheaper. I mean, if you picked up a core motor and you built it yourself, honestly, if I built this for myself the way that I did this and and with the parts I have here, I probably have uh, price wise about eight hundred bucks into this motor out of my pocket. <laughs> So, you know, but there's the labor involved. You know, if you do the labor yourself, you're like, well, why are you getting 2800 for it? Well, because, you know, I have to make money. <laughs> so, uh, labor, 
labor is what's expensive. So if you can do some of this work yourself and have the machine shop help you out on the heads, man, I'll tell you, it's a really good way to make a nice uh, small block. I'm actually going to run this on the run stand and dial it in for him. So I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope this opens your eyes a little bit to what is possible with these small block Chevys. And I know the LSs are great, uh, you know, the imports have their advantages, but the, the old small block Chevy, I'm telling you, it is by far the most bang for the buck, and it still outsells everything out there, including the LS motors. These are still the top dog as far as being the most popular. So hopefully this will help you, and I appreciate you watching. If you have any comments, I know I tend to ramble on, and I'm sorry about that. If you have any comments, please list below. Oh, stay tuned. The 390 build is getting really close to being finished. <laughs> um, I know you've seen the latest videos with the heads and stuff. There's a bunch of other videos that have gone way beyond that. The heads are actually on the motor. So uh, that is coming up very shortly, I promise you. So stay tuned, and I will talk to you very soon, I promise. Thanks for watching.